The release of WWE 2K20 led to the cancellation of 2K21, tension between WWE and 2K, and a worldwide pandemic that shook the foundation of our society. Okay, I don't think that last one is 2K20's fault. Maybe. But with the release of the long-awaited 2K22, this game needed to be good. And is the game the long-awaited return to wrestling video game glory? Or is it more of whatever the hell this is? The answer is predictably somewhere in the middle. Cutting right to the chase, WWE 2K22 is the best looking wrestling game, bar none. Watching the entrances is a treat itself, especially the lighting. I mean, look at this. The game speaks for itself here. Character models are better too for the most part. Ew, ew, ah! For the first time ever, Edge actually looks like Edge and not a person that's cosplaying as him. John Cena doesn't look like he's in the middle of transforming into Solomon Grundy anymore. And overall, mostly everyone looks better. Notice how I said mostly because a lot of the women still look a little weird. The hair physics are better, but still pretty bad. And most notable example of this is Dolph Ziggler's hair. It looks like he has a mop on top of his head. The legend and flashback wrestlers look a little bit off at times. Like Rey Mysterio in 1997 was not this jacked. Damn boy, he fit! And Shawn Michaels looks closer to his WWE All-Stars character design as opposed to how he looked in real life. Overall character designs have been improved though. Other little things like the details on the bottom of John Cena's shoes and how the light reflects off of the ropes just make the game look fantastic. When looking at pre-release stuff, I thought there was no way this game can look this good, but it honestly does. It's also helped out by the fact that the commentary is improved as well. No longer do the commentators sound like they're just reading lines off a piece of paper. It sounds like they're calling a match. It sounds like how it should if you would watch WWE, for better or worse. There are even times where I crack a smile at some of these lines. Uh-oh. Look at this! Uh-oh is right! Fall away slam! You guys are so cute. As far as gameplay goes, there's a lot to get into here. When playing, you immediately notice the new controls. I don't necessarily have a problem with them. You get used to them eventually. But the one thing that was said so many times pre-release was that these new controls were simpler, but it's the exact opposite. In past games, all you had to do was hit one button to do springboards, signature moves, and finishers. But now you have to hold different combinations of buttons to do these very same things. In WWE 2K19, you could just press triangle to do a finisher. But now in 2K22, you have to hold R2 and press X for a finisher. Hold R2 and press square for a signature. Hold L1 and press circle for a springboard. Do you see where I'm getting at here? Don't get me wrong, the controls in 2K22 aren't some incomprehensible Einstein project that only the greatest minds in our known universe have a hope to understand. But is it simpler than it used to be? <laughs> The actual in-ring action feels like 2K addressed a lot of the concerns that people had with the previous 2K games. The past 2K games were all slow and bogged down by things for the sake of realism, but it just made the game not fun to play. Most people don't want to do rest holds in video games or take three minutes to pull someone out of an elimination chamber pod or have to slowly walk around due to some stamina meter or just watch you get your ass beat because you ran out of limited reversals. All of that stuff is gone. Wrestlers automatically dragging opponents towards the middle of the ring is gone. Having set destinations to place ladders and tables is gone. It really feels like they listen to the community here. Gameplay is fast and it constantly keeps you in action with very little lulls in between. And I'm all here for it. There's a new combo system. When I first heard of this, I had Vietnam style flashbacks to WWF Warzone and WWF Attitude. We had to do these fighting game commands in order to do simple moves. Thankfully, it's nothing like that. You have three to four button inputs to press, light strikes, heavy strikes, and grapples. You combine these to make a combo. The way to reverse these is to correctly guess which button your opponent's going to press in order to do a combo breaker. You know, I'd make a killer instinct joke, but the game already did that for me with this trophy, so. This is also how you reverse grapples too. You tie up and then you have to guess what button your opponent's going to press. The combos I really like, and I love that they brought back the light and heavy grapples. But this reversal system where you have to guess... Uh... 
I don't know. This system does make everything faster, but I'm not too keen on having to just straight up guess. I like to make educated guesses, or reads, if you will. If you notice a pattern in someone's playstyle, you can make a read and punish them for it, but this is just straight up blind guessing most of the time. I've warmed up to it a bit, but it's not what I'd say ideal. What is ideal is this dodge mechanic. Doing a dodge leaves your opponent open for any sort of attack, but I personally like to bait my opponents to throw a strike, then dodge and hit my finisher. This is not good. See, stuff like that is intuitive and a fun thing to do, not just guess like you're playing the lottery. When it comes to the AI, they are aggressive and take the fight to you, although there are some odd quirks about it. The AI loves going to the top rope for some reason, even guys who don't normally go to the top rope. And the AI can get stuck at times and just stare at each other. Glitches are always in these games, but I have to give credit where it's due. I've rarely run into any. My very first match, my opponent froze and I was unable to finish the match, and I had whatever the hell is going on here. But besides those things, I personally haven't had anything that's worthy of noting. Well, besides crashing. Overall, I love that they sped up the gameplay, and this is the most enjoyable WWE 2K game to actually play. But there are some things I don't like. For some unholy reason, 2K decided to add in these button mashing abomination minigames. To kick out of pins, you have to mash. You can change it, but there's two things wrong with this. One, if you are halfway decent at button mashing, there is absolutely no way you can be ever pinned. Seriously, I haven't been pinned yet. Using the button mashing method gives you an advantage over someone who's not. This will probably be patched later on, but what I don't get is how does this stuff even happen? Doesn't anyone play the game and go, Hey guys, it's impossible to pin a human player, we have to fix this. Secondly, you can only use the button mashing method online. So have fun with that submission system, which is also button mashing, because that's the only way you're gonna win. While the overall gameplay was improved, something that was downgraded was the weapons. It's cool that things like the kendo stick break into pieces and the broken table pieces stay in the ring longer, but weapons are not fun to use simply because it takes like five hours to swing the damn thing. Like what is this, Thor's chair? Just swing it. The stop sign specifically is laughably slow. Outside of that, the weapon physics are bad. Don't get me wrong, putting people through tables is really, really satisfying. Nothing to do here. No way. To the table with authority. The Falcon Arrow Chaser for the win. Two. That's it. But the thing is, is that the physics in general are still very much behind SmackDown vs. Raw 2011, which is a game that is over a decade old. You could slam people onto pretty much anything in that game. But in this game... Up top, look at the power here! Incredible! That was ridiculous! Yeah, he just straight up Danny Phantom went through that shit. Adding to this is the fact that you can't even aim the direction of your moves anymore. Why on earth was this taken out? So now it's significantly harder to put someone through a table or to set up a spot. What an odd oversight. Also, the tables and ladders must be made out of paper mache or something because they fall over if you leave the window open and a small draft comes in. Like, look how this thing is moving around. The weapons could have been way better, but despite my grievances, the gameplay is improved and I really like it. But I feel like I'd like it even more if some of these things that are rather obvious should have been addressed. So the gameplay is good, but what about the game modes? Well, we'll start off with Rey Mysterio's showcase mode. These 2K showcase modes have been in the game for a while, and this one is in the same vein. You go through matches in Rey's career, and for each match, you go through objectives, watch a cutscene that reenacts what happens in real life, and then you repeat until it's over. It's fine. These are enjoyable, not in a video game way, but in a interactive DVD kind of way, if that makes any kind of sense. There have been some general improvements such as background music which reminds me of the old school wrestling days.
In the past, they had commentary, but it was immersion breaking because they would have commentators who weren't there in real life commentate over these moments, and it was just silly. Thankfully, that's not the case, because if I would have to hear Byron Saxton and Michael Cole call a WCW match, I may have to squeeze a lemon into my eyeball. Rey Mysterio himself narrates over the cutscenes, and it's a better alternative to the commentary. One little gripe that I have is that Rey talks as if he was in a real life fight and not a scripted wrestling match. Eddie always had an answer for everything. I should have seen that elbow coming though. He got me pretty good. This isn't even an issue, but I would like to have heard Rey's general thoughts about things rather than saying how sinister and evil Kane is. When cutscenes are activated, the in-game footage and real-life footage blends together seamlessly, and it's pretty cool. Although I can't show you this because I streamed this and 2K nuked my home for doing so. I'd also like to point out that so many things are blurred in the footage. It's more blurry than a Girls Gone Wild commercial. The showcase mode is inoffensive and can be fun, but there's one glaring issue that I can't help but point out. When you think of Rey Mysterio's career, what two matches pop into your head? The 2006 Royal Rumble and his WrestleMania 22 title win, right? Neither of those two things are in this mode. How? It's like having a Tobey Maguire documentary and not mentioning frickin' Spider-Man. Gonna cry? So I get that it'd be hard to include the Royal Rumble because there were a ton of guys in there that they would have to get the rights to, and there was this one guy in the rumble that's so infamous that WWE goes out of their way to never ever mention again. I'm talking about Simon Dean, of course. Who do you think I was talking about? But you could just play a video package that sets the stage for you, then throw you into the final three, which were Randy Orton, Triple H, and Rey Mysterio himself. All of these guys you have access to in the game. The fact that these two matches aren't even mentioned at all is weird. I guess we had to make way for legendary matches such as Rey Mysterio vs. Grand Metalik, which is a match that everyone remembers fondly, right? No! Showcase mode has been improved, but the thing is you can complete it in a little over an hour and the match selection is super bizarre. Universe mode returns. This mode has never really been my thing personally because I feel like I need to work my way towards something when playing a game. And universe mode just feels like a sandbox where you do whatever you want. I'm, I'm not bashing it at all. I actually love the customization options that it provides. If you want to replace the Raw logo with a McDonald's one, hey, sure. Go ahead. I love games that give these options. Unfortunately, Universe Mode has little to nothing new in it this year. There is this mode where you follow one specific wrestler, which is something that piques my interest, but it isn't handled all that well. Firstly, you can't even simulate anything for some reason. You'll eventually be asked what you want to do, and it's kinda lame. Like, you ask for a championship match, and you just get one. No build-up or anything. I got into a rivalry with Bobby Lashley, and after a match, he tries to sneak attack me, but fails. Then next week, I beat him again so bad that he's apparently injured, but he's somehow competing next week against me again? Uh, uh, okay. I beat him again and the same fail sneak attack cutscene plays again. I fight him once again next week and I beat him again and the same exact fail sneak attack plays once again. This made me put down the mode. <laughs> I'm not really interested in watching the same cutscene play over and over again and no injury continuity. My rise is the all new career mode. You make your guy, which is a little slow for some reason. I feel like the game is going to crap. Well, anyway, this is Big Frank. You can choose your background, MMA, pro athlete, indie guy, actor. I love being able to choose this stuff and it's even referenced in commentary and during dialogue. I love playing football, but I just kind of got burnt out going from college to the pros and wanted a new challenge. I started training for this a few months back and WWE took notice. You start out in the performance center and make friends and rivals while there. And the best part about this is the fact that they got rid of that cornball cringe dialogue and narrative from the past career modes. It seems like it's going to be a fantastic mode, but things go south as soon as you reach the main roster. My Rise just comes across as a guy doing quests in an RPG game than it does a wrestling career mode. The biggest problem with this is that it doesn't have any real cohesion and barely any continuity. Look at this. This guy, who looks like the lighter version of Nico Avocado, by the way, hates Big E and wants me to attack him. Oh, okay, sure, I guess. Then this other guy hates Apollo Crews and wants me to beat him with a stick. Uh, sure. 
Then this Karen over here hates Baron Corbin and wants me to attack him. So is this like all a part of the same week? Is this three different episodes of SmackDown? Am I in a rivalry with these guys? I don't know! Your guess is as good as mine. I won the Intercontinental title and I don't even come out with it, nor is the belt mentioned. There was this other moment where I won the Money in the Bank briefcase, then I cut a promo which implies that I never had a shot at Roman's world title before, but I just came from a story where I had a championship match with Roman. Do you see what I mean here? Stories themselves are mostly started via social media posts, continued via social media post and ended via social media post. It's lame. You have two kids, right? After our match, they're going to wish their dad was more careful. That's actually a pretty good line, honestly. Too bad it's not done via a promo like a pro wrestler, it's done via Twitter like an edgy 14 year old. There are some cool cutscenes in the game, but when it's not social media posts, it's these fallout looking dialogues where the audio doesn't even sync with their mouths like I'm watching Kung Pao. I know and normally that is true, but KO was injured for a while and was able to use that time to extend his cash in window past the one year mark. I implore you to reconsider. My rise isn't a career mode in a wrestling game. It's an RPG type mode where you have different types of wrestling quests. You can even see all the missions in the menu. So if you were looking for this free to explore career mode, I'd say just stick with Wrestling Empire because there's a lot more career elements there besides, oh, hit this guy in the head with a stick because some random ass person told me to. My faction is probably dozens and dozens of hours long, but to me, this is a case of quantity over quality, in my opinion. My faction is the new microtransaction mode that was implemented in the game despite the game already being $70 to $120 depending on which edition you bought. It's a card game that's supposed to be an addicting loop that keeps you coming back for more cards and possibly even spend real money. You've all seen this before with things like Madden Ultimate Team and Diamond Dynasty and MLB The Show. The thing is, those game modes are way better. My faction lacks the one major thing that makes these game modes so addictive. Online gameplay. <laughs> Isn't the whole point of these card collecting modes is that you can build your team in these modes and then take that team online to battle other players? If that aspect is missing, then I have to ask what is even the point of this mode? Even if we ignore all that, the single player isn't fun either because most of the mode is focusing on tag matches, especially the Faction Wars mode which is all 4 versus 4 tag matches. These are not fun to play and can take ages just to finish one match simply because pins keep being broken up. This mode is a hassle. I can't imagine playing 500 matches of this unless I'm subjected to some kind of torture. I don't think the sparkly ass Undertaker card is worth it. I don't know how you can make these card collecting modes work in games that aren't team sports. The UFC series had the same problem years ago before they had to scrap it. I'm really curious to see how this mode performs. The last mode is the one I was most hyped about. GM mode. So let's draft our roster and book our show. So I want my show to be wrestling centric. I want six matches per show. Oh, there are only three matches per show. Okay, well, that's not a big deal. I noticed the CPU drafted Becky Lynch. Let's see if I can pull off some kind of trade to get her. Oh, there are no trades. Well, who needs trades when you can build your own guys up, right? So I wanted to set a rivalry for the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, there's no IC, US, or tag team belts. Well, we can always focus on the world title, right? I can make a match that would involve four of my biggest wrestlers. Oh, there are only singles and tag matches? Well, I can build a star around the Royal Rumble or maybe even Money in the Bank match. Oh, there are only five pay-per-views and the Rumble or Money in the Bank is not among them. How is this possible? How can you make a GM mode and have it be even more limited than SmackDown vs Raw 2006, a game that is three console generations older and is about 17 years old at this point. There's no excuse for this kind of thing. 
Even if we ignore all that, the mode has some idiotic things too, like no matter what show you pick, you always start out in a high school gym, which doesn't make any sense. And not every wrestler is put into the draft pool, it's only a random selection of wrestlers. So you can have drafts that don't involve people like Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar or John Cena. 2K! What on earth was the thought process here? Why is it that I can turn on my old Windows XP laptop and play EWR and have the ability to book multi-man matches? Hell, I can go to the 99 cent store, buy a book and a pencil and book a multi-man match. So why is this state-of-the-art video game unable to do that? I'll tell you why. So once that the next game comes out, or rather, if the next game comes out, they can advertise that GMO now has more titles, pay-per-views, and now has the ability to book multi-man matches, even though that should have been in the game in the first place. Awful. <sighs> well, having said all that, this mode isn't really all that great, but it's not worthless. I like the fact that you have to balance your budget with all the bells and whistles and wrestler contracts and gimmick matches. Power cards is something that's fun to add on where you screw over your opponent. And balancing what the wrestlers want and what Triple H wants is also a neat thing to do. And believe it or not, I enjoyed myself for a short time while playing this with someone, but I cannot recommend it with all these limitations. I, I, I just can't. Online mode is pretty standard. I'm pretty sure the servers are powered by a hamster running on a wheel because it is really, 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 really hard to get into a game. But when you actually get into a game, it's pretty smooth and really, really fun. There isn't much in terms of things to do online besides lobby matches and this tonight's match thing that sets a match division and an arena. Community creations and everything involved returns and it seems like it doesn't have a download limit anymore, which is pretty cool. Among us! Overall, not much to say about online. When the servers stabilize, it seems like online play can actually be an option due to how smooth it is and the lack of any sort of delay. Like I said, the gameplay in this game is pretty good, so teaming up with friends online actually sounds like a good alternative for once. Now, I can go on about all the other things like how each match type plays and the new backstage arenas that have Metal Gear Solid 3 ladders. What a thrill. Darkness and silence through the night. But I think this video has gone on long enough. WWE 2K22 is a game that I very much enjoy playing, believe it or not. I love just watching the entrances because they're so nice to look at. They up the presentation by leaps and bounds. Playing the game itself is so fun. It's no longer a slow bore like the past games for the most part, and it's relatively not glitchy. Having a back and forth match that ends with me catching some guy in the air and then hoisting him up on my shoulders to hit my finisher is the same kind of feeling I get when I watch a good wrestling match. But while the gameplay is fun, I feel like the game modes are all letdowns. My Rise, my GM, my faction, they all just want to make me kill myself. Showcase is fun, but it lasts no more than two hours and the match selection is weird. Universe mode is the same and the one new thing they added seems lackluster. My Rise has continuity issues and doesn't come across as a career mode. My faction is a pointless bore without online implementation, and my GM is so limited. A lot of people like to use the term foundation game, which means that this game is a starting point to build to better games. So it's a fancy way of saying that the game is incomplete and that we are paid beta testers in a way. I hate this foundation excuse because SmackDown vs Raw 2006 had a GM mode for the first time ever and it had all the features you'd expect from such a mode. Now why does a game that's on newer hardware, with a bigger publisher, with a bigger development team, and more than double the development time, can't even replicate that? That's something, unfortunately, I don't have the answer to. Now, at the end of the day, this is just my opinion, and if you made it this far in the video, I'd like to say thanks for hearing me out. My opinion seems to be the unpopular one, because 2K22 was well received not only by fans, but by critics alike. That's fine, I'm happy people are positive about wrestling games again. But there's this looming force that I wasn't going to mention in this video, but I feel like I have to. As of this recording, it's being rumored that WWE has been having talks with EA about taking over the license. If you're in WWE's shoes, can you really blame them? 2K22 aside, the series has been nothing special since 2K took over, and two of the worst wrestling games of all time have been released under 2K's watch. Would EA be any better? I 
don't know, honestly. People immediately point out that EA would push the game with microtransactions, which is probably true, but that's something we practically have already. What do you think my faction is intended to be? And wrestlers like Omos, who should have been in the game to begin with, are locked behind DLC for some reason. I think the biggest struggle for EA would be that they would have to build the game from the ground up, which would take years to do. Would WWE wait that long? Things like community creations would suffer as well because creation in EA games is as limited as those dress up games you'd find on a Flash site in 2004. I don't know the future of WWE video games to be honest with you, but despite my complaining and my gripes, 2K22 would be a good finale if this is indeed 2K's last wrestling game. As always, thank you guys for watching, especially to the very end, I really appreciate it. This video didn't really turn out as funny as I liked it to be, but I hope you all enjoyed it anyway. Peace.